I was thrown into this business and I tried to do my best and uh, it was hard work all along the line. You made many of your early films with Sternberg, a very productive partnership. After him, with which director did you work best? Billy Wilder. You made one film in, in Britain in the 30s. That was the first time you came and saw us, wasn't it? Yes, I, I played uh, in a film that Mr. Hitchcock made called Stage Fight. Yes. And then afterwards I made a picture here called No Highway. But you would not return to Berlin to work under the Nazi regime? No, I did not. You had by now become an American citizen? In this oh, country. yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the war came, and for three years you traveled the world from Anzio to the Aleutians entertaining the United States forces, often under the run. Not only the United States, I understand many British troops, this is true. all the Allied troops. It must have been a heartbreaking time for you with your natural affection for your own people in the back of your mind. No, it was not. It was not a heartbreaking time. I, I did what I thought was right, and I did the best I could. Well, it was work that your new country recognized with the highest civilian award. After the war, more films in Hollywood and France and this country, then you decided on, on a new career as a solo artist, first cabaret in Las Vegas and London. You made a sensational success when you appeared at the Café de Paris in London with a, a different celebrity to introduce to every night. Yes, wasn't that wonderful? I think the most famous people the English, because in no other country the great actors would have done that. I never believed it that uh, Mr. Guinness and Mr. Schofield and they all would come and introduce me in the cavalry. I never believed it until I saw them. And from all of them, it was from the heart. <laughs> and now you play a whole evening just on your own in a theater. Yes, I do. Well, before we talk about that anymore, let's have your fourth record. What have you chosen next? Well, let's stay with Beethoven and play the third, conducted by Toscanini. An excerpt from Beethoven's Third Symphony, conducted by Arturo Toscanini. Miss Dietrich, where is your home now? Well, it's everywhere, New York, Paris, all over. Yes. Yeah. This new profession of yours in which you give a whole evening's entertainment must be a very exacting and exhausting one. No, I love it. I love it more than making films or anything else except records. I do love to make records, yeah. but I like this profession very much. You sing some of your old songs and some new ones. What must a song have for you to choose it? Well, I think the lyrics matter most because... Um, as I'm not a singer, I need the words very much to give expression to the song. And um, I just wish I could sing some more songs by Bert Backwright because he's such a popular composer. Well, I'm sure I'm going to work for you. <laughs> well, I have done one song of his on a record, but I've only done it in German. But there's a record out of it. It's called Message to Martha. And Adam Faith made it, and it's a wonderful song. Message to Martha sung by Adam Faith. In how many countries have you given your one-woman entertainment now? Oh, in almost every country, except I haven't been in Japan yet, nor in Australia. That must have been an emotional moment when the curtain went up for you again on a Berlin audience after all those years. I know that you were an equal success there with Paris, Moscow, and everywhere else. No, it wasn't a particularly emotional moment, no. You said you had no ambition, Miss Dietrich, but isn't there anything that you want anywhere you want to play, that you want to direct, do you want to create in any way? No. You're just no. happy with the pattern that it is? Well, I'm very happy here in London at the Queen's, and I wish it could last forever, but it doesn't. But I love Edinburgh, too. I want to say this again and again and again. I love Edinburgh. Fine. Let's have record number six now. Reach out for me, my Dion Warwick. When you go to Lord... Reach out for me by Dion Warwick. Now, you have renowned with Dietrich as a symbol of, of glamour. How about the practical side of life? Are you a good cook? No, I yes. 
Have you ever camped out? Well, no, I wasn't forced to. I don't see any reason to camp out if you don't have to. But uh, if I would have to, I probably would be able to. You could, you think, on a desert island, live off the land? Yes, I eat very little. Um, have you ever fished? Oh, I love fishing. Don't stop me on that. We have no time. <laughs> could you cultivate? Do you like gardening? Yes, uh, I like anything you do with your hands. If you acquired some form of craft, say a raft, would you try to escape or would you sit it out on this island? Well, I think I would sit it out. Yeah. I have patience, you see. More patience than navigational skills. That is right, because I don't do anything I know nothing about. That uh, makes me very happy, you see. I'm not frustrated. That's her record number seven. Well, record number seven would be Waltz, Ravel. Part of Ravel's La Valse, played once again by the New York Philharmonic, conducted by Leonard Bernstein. What's number eight? Now, number eight, I think, should be uh, L'Enfant et les Sortilèges, Ravel. You're not going to take one of your own records with you. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I never listen. I never listen to my own records, no. No, I don't think anybody who has ever done anything or created anything likes to look at it. I have never seen a painter who likes to look at his own painting. I think it's for the other people to listen to as they like it. Yeah. Which part of L'Enfoyer Sortilège would you like to hear? Well, you choose it, all right? How about the cat duet? The cat duet from Ravel's L'Enfoyer et Sortilège, conducted by Lorin Marshall. If you could only have one of those eight records, which would it be? Sacré du printemps. And you're allowed to take one luxury with you to this island. What are you choosing? Well, it depends what you mean with luxury. I mean, something that uh, means absolutely nothing to anybody else, is that it? Something that means something to you, but isn't going to help you materially to live well, on the island. I'll tell you what I will take. Uh, I take it with me wherever I go. It's a little bunch of white heather that I received in Edinburgh. Mm. Um, but the people of Scotland bought me, and I take it with me wherever I go. And then I have a pair of ballet shoes that I received in Moscow. The children from the... Bolshoi Ballet School gave it to me, and I have those with me all the time, and well, I probably would grab them and take them, all right. We put those in the box, and then what? What, what else? Well, what else? Do you want anything else in the box? You, your demands have been very modest. Please, may I have the wish to record? What, all of them? Well, all of them, yes. Well, it's difficult to make a choice. I said you would have something else in the box, so... You'll have the list of records and one book to take with you. One well. book, uh, that's Konstantin Kostovsky, The Story of a Life, mm -hmm. and a short story. I wish I could have that too. Can I? Couldn't you make an exception for me, please? Yes. There's a short story that he wrote, which is called The Telegram. We'll slip that into the back Slip of the that book. in, because it's the most beautiful short story ever written. It's the most beautiful love story to a mother ever written, and... He's a modern Russian writer, is he not? Well, he's not that modern. He is probably by now, I should say, 65. But he's still with us. Oh, yes. He was here in London. Okay. Well, thank you, Marlena Dietrich, for letting us hear your choice of Desert Island Discs. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> The gift in today's recorded program was Marlena Dietrich. The interviewer was Roy Plumley, and the producer, Monica Chapman.